This is the new headquarters of the European Central Bank. The building stands over 185 meters tall and is subject to strict security. We're joining a guided tour for journalists to get a look inside, a rare privilege. Okay, let's get started. Please watch out for construction vehicles and builders. Remember, it's still a building site. The towers of the new central bank have been incorporated into a former indoor market that has protected status because it's a historic building. It's been totally transformed on the inside. The new foyer provides a suitably impressive entrance. While work on the grounds is still continuing, inside workers are busy painting the walls and installing the many technical features. The new headquarters have cost 1.3 billion euros to build. That's 50% more than originally budgeted. The upstairs area of the old indoor market now houses the conference center. It can host up to 12 meetings at a time. Some meetings may run for eight or ten hours, or even two days, with breaks, of course. So the rooms have to be suitable. There needs to be good air circulation. It mustn't be too warm or too loud, and no noise from outside. Next, we meet the architect. How did he conceive the building? Does the design reflect the ECB's mandate? <laughs> you can get into hot water if you start drawing comparisons like that. But then the architect does dare to draw a comparison. There are two towers joined by an atrium. The two towers wouldn't be able to stand on their own. Two partners stabilize each other and together they form one tower. So you could say that reflects European monetary policy. Some employees have already moved in. The rest are to follow in November. 2,900 people will then be working here. But despite its impressive size, the new building is actually too small for the ECB's now expanded duties. We've been given a new task, which is to monitor banks across Europe. The people responsible for that will stay in the city centre. They'll move into the Euro Tower. In other words, they won't be here at the ECB headquarters. There just isn't room for them. That new division alone has around a thousand employees. Planning for this building began in 2001. Obviously, the planners looked repeatedly at how the ECB was growing and what changes were needed. But no one foresaw the bank receiving such a huge new task in the immediate future. At the end of our tour, we head up to the 42nd floor and the meeting room of the ECB executive board. It's framed by windows on three sides. Mario Draghi will sit in the center opposite the main entrance. One journalist tries out the ECB president's chair. The decisions made in this room will determine the future of the euro. That's important stuff. Have adequate measures been taken to prevent others listening in? I can't talk about that. But there is a foolproof system. There is. So nothing can go wrong. No comment. Instead, the architect explains the design of the ceiling. It shows a distorted map of Europe. It was never our intention that the map of Europe would be directly recognizable, but that it should arouse curiosity, where you ask yourself, what is that on the ceiling? What is that wave-like, cloud-like structure? Now, of course, you could read something into that, but we don't see dark clouds. We see Europe. Europe is nevertheless going through turbulent times. The debt crisis continues and banks across Europe are now subject to closer monitoring. It's the ECB's job to keep the overview and steer Europe's financial markets into calmer waters.